Hey everybody, my name is Mike. I am not for Coltrane. Thank you very much for your patience. That took a lot longer than anticipated to get uh, to get online today. Thank you very much for hanging out. And uh, yes, all of those things. So uh, one of the key things today was at the last minute, of course, I was working on the uh, the arrangement for uh, the song I'm leading off with today. And then I looked up at the clock and said, oh crap, I'm later than I expected to be. Uh, and then I found Facebook is not doing what it's supposed to do. But, in any case, uh, so we're here on the YouTube. We're not on the Facebook today, unfortunately. We may be able to, uh, to post to Facebook later or something. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but, in any case, hi. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for, uh, for, for being patient as it took a minute for me to get, or several, several minutes for me to get to where I wanted to be. Uh, yes, thank you, Beth, for letting me know that you can see and hear me. Let me move that to where I can see it more conveniently. All right. And has the road led me astray? Well, maybe. We'll find out. Uh, but first, let's say that uh, in just a bit, we will have time for the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band game, wherein I will play requests regardless of whether I know the song that's requested. Uh, so if you request a song that I do know, I'll try to remember how to play it. If you request a song that I kind of sort of know, I'll try to figure out how to play it. Uh, and if you request a song I don't recognize at all, I'll have to make up a brand new song right here on the spot with the same name as the song that was requested, thereby technically satisfying the requirement. That is how we play the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band game. It'll be very straightforward to share the YouTube video to Facebook later. Yes, that is almost certainly what I will end up doing. The only issue is the, uh, well, you know me, because I, I make everything more complicated. But in any case, um, yes, that is probably what will happen shortly after we are finished here. But at the moment, uh, so I say first off, a uh, great time to hit the like button or hit the, the share button, or especially since there might be folks who otherwise would be looking for it on Facebook and are not seeing it here. Uh, and as well as, uh, you know, subscribe on YouTube and all of those things to indicate to our algorithmic overlords that you are happy with seeing this content and would like to see more of it. Uh, it's also a great time to get in your requests for the Not For Coltrane Stump The Band game uh, because it will be a, there's a lag, there's a delay between when you punch them in and when I'll be able to see them. And also a good time for me to tell you about the, uh, the song I will be leading off with today. Which is, as I suspect Mark has already figured out, uh, it's going to be Feed the Fire by Happy Roads. So, uh, Roads, uh, R-H-O-D-E-S, as you might expect for a last name, Happy actually is her legal first name. Uh, it was a nickname she picked up as a very, very young child. And she much preferred it to her given name. And uh, she legally changed her name, her first name, to Happy at the age of 16, went on to, uh, there's a song called, oh, Read Receipts, okay. Uh, uh, so let, right, Beth has a request already. Great. I will try not to think about that while I'm busy doing the Happy Roads song, Feed the Fire. We will see how this goes. It is, um, so there are, there are multiple versions of this song out uh, that Happy Roads put out. I'm going to attempt, and this was the thing that I was I was spending time on in the moments before the uh, before the the stream was supposed to be going live, figuring out how to blend elements of the album version of Feed the Fire by Happy Roads as well as the acoustic tribute version, uh, which brings in snippets from um, the band Yes and Kate Bush and uh, Z David Bowie. I almost said Ziggy Stardust, but you know. Uh, and so I, they, I have, I have, I've been spending time working with the different versions of it, listening to it, and figuring out how they all fit together. Uh, the, the. As usual, it could probably have used a little more time in the oven, but we're going to see how this is going to go for us here today. Make sure that is functional. This is. All right. My attempt. Off the cuff, un underprepared for Feed the Fire by Happy Roads.
How was I doing this? Oh, right.
better than it had any right to be. My attempt at Feed the Fire by Happy Roads. So there you go. Uh, let's see. So, yes, a predecessor to WWW Usenet. <laughs> Soggy weekend for submitting. Uh, okay, there we are. Uh, highly recommend the song. Read receipts. Uh, uh, grateful for that. How are you? Yeah, yes. Yes, Mark. Uh, Beth is remarking that the reason for her, uh, for her request for the song Read Receipts uh, is because of uh, lived experience today and people not responding to her texts, which is a not terribly subtle way of remarking that I have not been responding to her texts from earlier today, which I respect and I appreciate and I see you. Uh, Mark is responding the, uh, that uh, at least Mark is responding to Beth here. Beth says, yes, I appreciate that. It's also a good song. Uh, Mark was remarking then also about uh, Happy Roads. It says, a predecessor to WWW, the World Wide Web, Usenet is where I picked up on Happy Roads. It started as a Usenet group for Kate Bush and then for Tori Amos, but then for Happy Roads. Wow, Mark, you, um, you are then part of the, what I believe is part of the original uh, online community that led to uh, some, some level of, of, uh, of, of notoriety and awareness for the music of uh, Happy Roads. Um, so yes, as I said, she, uh, she has been, actu Happy Roads is actually her name. It is a person, it is not just uh, a band name, it is actually her. And she had been, um, so from what I understand, from the little bit of the, the bio that I dug up as well, I should say that the bio for Happy Roads on uh, Spotify, actually quite good. Uh, in addition to, of course, the information you can find on Wikipedia and elsewhere. Uh, Happy Roads, uh, growing up, uh, interested, you know, started hearing the, the music of um, um, Queen. And I was like, oh, hey, I should learn how to sing like that guy in the same octave as that guy. Uh, eventually developed what I understand is a five-octave vocal range, which is remarkable. Uh, and was, uh, was, was making some, some music on her own, was posting it online. And then apparently the very Usenet group that Mark was, uh, was hanging out with online... Uh, discovered her music, it ended up connecting with some uh, some radio DJs and whatnot, and some start, stuff started getting out there. The um, the song Feed the Fire ended up uh, connected with a DJ at uh, Philadelphia's WXPN, and WXPN, uh, of course, the, the indie music uh, national public radio public station in, uh, in Philadelphia there that has continued to do lots of cool stuff with uh, promoting independent report, uh, independent artists and recordings. Um, yeah, Feed the Fire uh, kind of took off. There is a wonderful interview online with her from about 1995 with horrible audio quality, uh, but wherein as a, a television person in Philadelphia is interviewing her about her music and where the name comes from and all of those sorts of things. So, whenever there are eventually links that are posted with this particular YouTube video, you'll be able to see those things. Um, fortunately, uh, and I wasn't sure this was going to happen since uh, Happy Roads is in fact just a little bit more obscure than some of the folks that I tend to cover on this channel. Um, I was able to find live video of her playing the acoustic version of that song, which was very helpful in figuring out what the chords were that I was supposed to be doing. I attempted for a while to figure out how to do the picking pattern that she does on the, um, on the original acoustic tribute version, which is something like... Slowed it down a little bit more to get in. That's more like the picking pattern she does on the acoustic tribute version of the song. Uh, obviously, I could not play it at speed, and I wasn't also convinced that I'd be able to do the lyrics while trying to do that. So I said, all right, we're jettisoning all of that at the last minute, uh, and we're going to attempt to do it in another fashion. But yes, in very, very interesting, and uh, fortunately, someone, possibly Mark, <laughs> had posted enough information online for me able to, to track down, uh, first off, that it's Yes and Kate Bush and uh, David Bowie. I recognize the David Bowie, 
um, but I did not, well, I was not as familiar with, uh, with Yes and with uh, Kate Bush. And let me see if I could find this here. In addition to, oh, figures. The, uh, da, 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 da. nope, that's not going to help me. That's not going to help me. Oh, I'm not going to be able to find it now. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Because I had the names of, I had the names of the songs, but now I can't pull up the particular window that I need to be able to uh, show me what. But I, the Kate Bush quote is from, um, oh wait, I know what songs they are. So the Kate Bush quote is from uh, Running Up That Hill, uh, which also had a, a sort of a, a recent uh, rebirth in popularity after it was used on uh, Stranger Things recently. And the uh, line from Yes, I believe, is from Long Distance Runaround, uh, which was a song that I also was really not familiar with. Uh, so I had, was able to listen to the recording, figure out enough of the lyric that I could search online based on the band name and the lyric and be able to figure out what the songs uh, are from uh, so that I could actually have some idea what the references are and be able to say, oh, okay, those are what the actual lyrics are there, uh, despite whatever I might be just hearing off the cuff when I'm, when I'm trying to listen to Happy Roads do her version of it. Happy Roads uh, basically kind of went into uh, into retirement from performing uh, a couple years ago. Got back out, uh, got back out there, and was fronting a Peter Gabriel tribute act, which is cool. But I think uh, lives in and is you know like doing instrument repairs or something like that, something cool, just on her own, on her own thing. I'm very curious, and I have not found this out yet, I'm very curious to see if Happy Roads ever performed at Godfrey Daniels here in Bethlehem, PA. It seems likely, it seems possible, but I don't know if, in fact, you know, she was out performing and, and touring in the, in the early to mid-90s, it seems, and especially if she was making stops at public television stations in uh, Philadelphia, it seems possible that Godfrey's could have been on her route, but I don't know. I will try to follow up and find out more information about that. So, it is just about time for the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band game. Beth already has a request, but she is also, uh, so with, you know, if people else also want to jump in with something else, that's fine too. As a refresher, in case you missed the top of the show, we're, the way the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band game works is people will give me a song request. I have to play it regardless of whether I know the requested song. Uh, I might, I might, if it's one I do know or have known, I'll have to try to remember how to play it. Uh, if it's one I've heard but don't necessarily have played before, I have to figure out how to play it here in front of everyone. If I don't recognize the requested song at all, I have to make up a brand new song right here on the spot with the same name as the song that was requested, thereby technically satisfying the requirement. That is how we play the Not For Coltrane Stunt, the band game. I believe we are going to go with Beth's request for read receipts. I will pull up some additional information uh, from back where Beth had requested that a few moments ago in the chat. I will also say that coming up this 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 uh, this coming month, April, April is for Africa and Asia. No, A is for <laughs> close. I was almost there. A is for April, Africa, and Asia. The uh, the request that was submitted for the month long theme by an individual online who has been contributing to the tip jar. Uh, and so he got to pick that. I have been working on coming up with songs that mention places in Africa or Asia. Um, initially, somewhat challenging. I uh, wasn't able to come up with a whole lot of songs off the top of my head, uh, which kind of, you know, I thought, well, on one hand, like this is, this is like two thirds of the world's landmass. This is the, you know, the, or the locations of, of most of the earliest civilizations on, or human civilizations on the planet, human civilizations. We don't know of any, any non-human civilizations on the planet, but you know, you never know. Um, so, you know, these are, these are important regions that take up so much of the earth. Uh, how is it possible there are not more songs about them? Uh, it also then occurred to me that it's, it's given that uh, when one is writing a song in English, it is more common to write about places that the English-speaking songwriter has been to or and knows about. Uh, so it doesn't, you know, it's maybe not. Anyway, point is, uh, it was initially difficult to come up with some songs. I came up with a few off the top of my head, then did a little more on online research and came up with several other wonderful options. I believe I have four songs picked out, and we're going to proceed with those over the coming weeks. Uh, taking, taking a little little tour around some uh, notable spots in Africa and Asia, though certainly by no means all 
of the notable spots in Africa and Asia. It also occurred to me, I went back and looked at the schedule and saw that um, this portion, this season four and a half of the, uh, of the Coltrane Tuesday show, um, is, was actually, we finally were going to reach the 52nd episode in the middle of April. But I'm going to go ahead to the end of April to finish up this very weird, disjointed, start-stop uh, season that we are in. So we're going to do four more, uh, four more weeks in April and then take a bit of a break. And maybe that's when I'll finally get all the links posted to all the videos that I've been, uh, been saying they need to have links posted on them. So that's how that's going to go. We're going to uh, do songs relating to locations in Africa and Asia starting next week. And thanks again to uh, Ralph for the theme for that. All right, so now time for the Not For Train Stump the Band Game. Happy birthday to Jennifer Gray. Would have been interested in playing Do You Love Me? Interesting. Five, five Tuesdays in April. Well, we might just go for two of them. For four of them. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how this goes. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see how long it takes until I collapse. Um, let's see. All right. So, Beth had requested Read Receipts by Kyle Thornton and the Company. Uh, and Mark has requested Do You Love Me by Jennifer Gray. All right. Well, seeing as we got started late, maybe we'll, we'll try to do both. I will try to start with, uh, with Do You Love Me by Jennifer Gray. Uh, Jennifer Gray. I don't believe I'm familiar. I'm trying to remember the name of the actor who starred in Dirty Dancing. Who's... I don't remember. That's I think it's the Jennifer, but I don't know that it's, it's necessarily the... Is that the same person? Mark, let me know. All right, so we're going to do The Contours. Okay, <laughs> that, that doesn't necessarily help me. But I appreciate you, Mark, because you are helping to expand my musical horizons. The, the song, Do You Love Me? The regular uh, YouTube has decided there needs to be a, uh, an, uh, an icon in the spot. The regular Do You Love Me? I, I have no idea what, what we're talking about here. Obviously, the, uh, the, the chord there with the little bass line progression inspired basically just entirely ripping off uh, what we had just seen there with, uh, with Happy Roads. But moving it into a major key instead of a minor key, that uh, might work. <laughs> Beth, yet again, uh, discovering that there is a love song, a standard perhaps, uh, which, of which I am... Uh, there's a decent possibility that I have, in fact, heard the song, Do You Love Me, uh, but I don't recognize it by that name.
<laughs> the Contours Do You Love Me was in Dirty, Dirty Dancing featuring Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze. Okay, so I was, I was, I was close. Jennifer Grey is in fact the person I was thinking of who starred in, uh, in Dirty Dancing, Don't Put a Baby in a Quarter. It's blues rock, work, 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 go shake it up, baby. You broke my heart because I couldn't dance. You didn't even want me around, and now I'm back to let you know I can really shake him down. Do you love me? I can really move. Oh, that one! That song! That is not at all what I was thinking of. Okay, so this is the... Do you love me? 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 Do you love me now that I can dance? That one. So, okay, so the Motown. All right, so now I know where, know where we're going with this. I wish I remembered to bring my capo with me into the stairwell today. So let's see. <laughs> yes, I was trying to make it Happy Road style, basically. I was thinking, you know, honestly, the, the song that came to mind was, um, was I think uh, what I was channeling was Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow is what I was thinking of, uh, sort of tonally, uh, and where I might go with, uh, with Do You Love Me. So it's a very, very different sort of feel from what what the actual song is. Now I know what we're talking about, and so we're going to see if we can... Let's see, actually, no, should I be... I do... Maybe it should be a G harp. Yes, that one. <laughs> yeah, that's that's about right. I'm doing the math wrong in terms of figuring out what key it would need to be, so let's just go with the obvious. I'm playing here. doing what he is typically doing in assisting me. I appreciate it. There are some lyrics here so that I can follow along. You broke my heart because I couldn't dance, didn't even want me around, and now I'm back to let you know I can really shake him down. Do you love me? I can really move. Do you love me? So, all right.
it all. You broke my heart. There's a curtain in the You didn't even want me around. And now I'm back. Yeah, that's better. Okay, that's how we're going to do it. Attempting, again, Do You Love Me? As, as has appeared in the movie Dirty Dancing, starring Jennifer Grey. Happy birthday, Jennifer Grey. today. Thanks very much to Beth for the request for read receipts. That is going to go on a pile of special requests that will happen sometime. Uh, but in the meantime, I appreciate the assistance from both Mark and Beth to help me figure out what is, uh, yes, <laughs> reading receipts now. Trying to uh, figure out how to play that particular song and to help me recognize it since I did not recognize it from the title. So again, thanks to Mark for that request. Thanks to Beth for her request for read receipts. Thanks to Mark also for his earlier request uh, during episodes as well as between episodes for Feed the Fire by Happy Roads. 
And um, of course, also thanks everyone who's been watching and sharing and liking and doing all of the online things. This may uh, soon, we hope, end up on uh, Facebook as well. We will see. We'll see how that goes. And in the meantime, coming up next week, four, maybe five, we'll see what we will continue the, uh, the weird and choppy uh, season four and a half here of the Cold Train Tuesday show into April beyond its scheduled conclusion. We will see how all of that goes as we venture into songs about places in Asia and Africa. And until that time, please take care of yourselves, take care of each other. My name is Mike. I am not for Coltrane. I will talk to you next time.